I think I'll do. Where were we? Uh, we were celebrating the overall success of the spring carnival. Gee, if you hadn't realised, we're a bit... You know, we have got a bit going on. Uh, that took ages for you to get that out. But yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh, look, my mind doesn't work very quickly at the best of times. Uh, and when I'm looking through Ascot form, which is exclusively for Ascot <laughs> and Perth based and Western Australian based horses, I wouldn't say my mind's racing. No, no, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, look, I... I'll be completely honest. I did the form for one race and one race only. And then I had a had a scour across the rest of the great land and I found a couple that I don't mind. Oh, mate, to be honest, I think we've got some good cards in uh, Ballarat, Kembla Grange. Um, Sunny Coast has got a pretty good track. Uh, card, sorry. <laughs> it's sure. got a good track too. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, Ascot, you know. Mm-hmm. But... Ooh. Before we get into the racing, mate, was there anything that caught your eye this week? Oh, haven't really thought about it, to be honest, mate. I, um, you know, it's just been that on the grind leading into the Christmas periods. You know, I'm sure ev- I'm sure everyone's been looking forward to the Christmas break, you know, feeling a bit burnt out from work. I'm yeah. the same. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit cooked. But for the next... Hopefully not now because I don't want to edit it that long, <laughs> especially for an Ascot pod. But, um, you know, for the next half an hour to an hour or so, we can put all that aside. We sure can. We sure can. Um, no, you know what? There's there's nothing really that's caught my eye. Um, you know, obviously the T20 victory was great. Unexpected. Unexpected. Very unexpected. Yep. Rolling out half our test side and then they get the JD. Lovely to see. You love to see that. And, oh, it's just nice as well heading into an Ashes because the confidence and the arrogance of uh, the English heading into that T20 World Cup. Oh, mate. Yeah, and, of course, they don't They don't even get to the final hurdle. They, uh, they trip at the second last hurdle. Well, when they beat Australia in the pool game, they're like, oh, that's that's terrible momentum for Australia. Look at them now. Yeah. Look at us now. And since when does a T20 tournament oh determine momentum for a test series on well, Australian soil? Well, for the Australians it might because three quarters of that side, are, they're going to don the baggy greens. They're riding high. For England, maybe a couple. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat bad. Uh. <laughs> maybe. Maybe he'll go home after three test matches because he's a little bit sad after facing a few bounces. It's oh. happened before. <laughs> it's happened before. <laughs> Who's donning the moustache <laughs> <laughs> for this test series? Uh, well, might be Starkey. Uh, maybe, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind seeing big. You know, I think Camo did, didn't he? Didn't Pat Cummins have a stash at one stage? Oh, anyone with the last name Cummins yeah. is not allowed to have a moustache. Oh, please. <laughs> Please. Arctic Monkeys are touring again. Are they? Yeah. Announced it uh, during the week. So they're touring Europe uh, end of next year. So about August. So that makes me think, mate, they wouldn't be announcing a tour if they didn't have a new album in the in the mix, which is very exciting for myself. and Something to look forward to. And you. I'll, yeah, I'll listen to them regularly. Yeah. So that's good stuff. It's a bit on. Um, you know, what I would say is that the theme of Arctic Monkeys probably isn't going to be prevalent throughout this podcast. No, but, but it's something that... <laughs> but cricket will be. Yeah, it will be. Um, so stick around because one of the great people of all time, um, Mitchell Swepson will be joining us for a chat later on to talk all things World Cup and potentially horse racing, potentially, uh, if we get that far. But, mate, before that, one thing that we do do at the... End of any great carnival, be it winter, be it autumn, be it spring. We typically do our team of that season. That said carnival. Uh, oh, it's world-renowned now. 
Um, yeah. Well, this is the third time we've done it, and we've changed the structure of the site. Yeah, we've, well, changed, we've changed sports. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we we change for the seasons. Like in the middle of winter, you're not going to be you're not going to be talking about anything other than the great game of rugby league, well, maybe AFL, but a side of twenty two is a lot. Unless we're playing the Ashes in England. Yeah, and again, <clears throat> this is our podcast. Yeah, and we're you know. This is, to be honest, it's the only thing that we have complete control of in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're thinking about, you know, life's like a big circle. And in that big circle, there's a smaller circle. <laughs> and within that small circle are things you can control. And that bigger circle are things that you can't control. Within that small circle of things we can control is mm. only this podcast. Nothing yeah. else in our lives we, no. we have control over. No, and the top five podcast. Uh, yeah. Season two coming soon. <laughs> Great plug. Still on a hiatus. But yeah. all right, the team of the spring. So this is an 11 instead of a, uh, starting 13 because of, you know, we have to honour the the great win of the Aussies in the T20 World Cup. So Yeah, that and, you know, we've got a, a great cricketer coming on to the podcast. We're heading into an Ashes series. Oh. The summer's just around the corner and it feels fitting. Mm, it's that... Anticipation in the air? <laughs> is that freshly mown grass? Is that <laughs> is that sunscreen? Is that a gold? <laughs> is that leather? Oh my goodness! Uh, so let's kick this off, all right? Now there couldn't be any other bloke facing the first nut of the series. There couldn't be. It has to be incentivized. Oh, without a doubt, you you padding up, um, you know. The anticipation's been building. First ball of a test series. There's, yeah, there is only one bloke I can think of to be confident that he's going to see out the first over with some strongly worded, no runs. No runs. And, well, he's clearly got a bit of Matty Hayden about him. Yeah, he does. Clearly. Yeah. Because he puffs the chest out when he's out there in the mounting yard, you know, has a look around, and then he just gets in there. When it's grand final day, he puts four lengths on them. Yeah. He scores, he averages, he scores over a thousand runs for the series. He does that easy. Easy mode. Averages over 50. Of course. Oh, oh, a, a massive contender for man of the series. Has incentivize. To um, I think incentivize is the type as well to as soon as the medium paces come on. Oh, man. And as soon as the spinners come on, off, off comes the helmet. Wickety whack. Yeah. On your bike, son. Off comes the helmet, just a bag of green. Yeah. He's not scared. No. So, yeah, we've got incentivised our um, opener, one of our openers, but he's taken the first rock. What an outstanding uh, spring carnival for him. Starting re- – oh, look, I guess his his sort of base level well, his was shield, – his shield cricket. Yeah, it was in Toowoomba. He was representing the Darling Downs. Yeah. And he's made his way through to Metro. Yep. And he's representing the great state of Queensland. Now he's been picked for his country. And he's delivered on the world stage. He has. He could get runs here. He could get them there. Doesn't matter where. Doesn't matter where. You he'll, can find incentivize anywhere. He'll develop three sweep shops if, if you need to <laughs> on the subcontinent. He'll do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he'll sit five wide. He will. That's a sweep shot. Yeah, that is. <laughs> there's, not, there's not a lot of batsmen who could pull that off, no. but incentivize could. God, no. All right, if we're spending this long <laughs> on each horse, I'll be editing all night. So, all right, I'll put this one to you. Mm. This guy... Red hot on the scene. Yeah. Brand new, even. He's only had three career starts from memory. But I think it's very Australian of us to throw our young pups in the deep end for Australian cricket if we back him. We're backing this bloke. We're backing him. He's, he's, a, he's a young bloke who's just come on the scene, but he's a prodigious talent. God, yeah. And he should be, and I'd have to check markets, but he'd be about 20 bucks in the Cox Plate Profondo for next year. I'd say he'd be around that, profondo. I'll tell you what, if you're targeting him towards maybe an Australian guinea, 1,600 metres, maybe even a Queen Elizabeth, profondo. I reckon they'll go that way. Yeah. He'll have a phantom weight. A Dave's not coming over. No, he's not. He's got a sore toe. Jeez, isn't that going to be a good race? Oh, yeah. Well, I would have loved a Dave there. Three in a row would have been fantastic. Would have been fantastic. Would have been wet, obviously. <laughs> Always is Sydney <laughs> autumn. But yeah, Profondo, he's a new kid on the scene. Um, but what a dynamic opening partnership, incentivising Profondo. Yeah. Profondo is no look, he, he's known to be play up a little bit off field. God yeah. Um He can't he can't walk straight sometimes. He's still got his nuts, Profondo. So 
You know, he might be punching Joe Root in the club <laughs> <laughs> before a series. But uh, no, welcome to the team. Oh, welcome. Uh, undeniable this oh, Mate, he is hitting the crispest pull shots to f- for four that you, you, that you ever could hope to see this bloke at first drop. The model of consistency. And he's a bit he's a bit vulnerable early if he doesn't get <laughs> his own way. Dead. Just falling over himself. <laughs> Zaki. Yeah, Zaki, yeah. Oh. Oh, early on in his innings, he... He's a <laughs> prime candidate for being bold, LBW. But if he gets a roll on, if you if you're serving up some custard, geez, he's up and away. He's leading the entire way. Oh god, yeah. And what a fantastic spring he had. Just a, a crying shame he wasn't there for the Cox Plate. Yeah, would have been three in the finish. But you know what? He might have missed Boxing Day, for instance. But then he rocked up in the New Year's Test, and he just. Scored 200 in the first innings. Yeah, thanks for coming. You know, um, the bit of contention around Zaki because the the English didn't see much in him at all. And that's actually where he grew up, playing a lot of his cricket. Yeah. Zaki. Um, where he, you know, cut his, cut his teeth doing that. But he thought, you know what? These blokes are not giving me a run. Mm. I'm going to go down to Australia. I'm just going to work my way up through the mm-hmm. grades. Yeah. And then, you know, he's acclimatised. He's been given citizenship. Yeah. And now he's... First drop for the for the great country. Welcome. Yeah, love lovely to have you, Zaki. Yeah, I think his his parents might have been Australian, so um, you know. Yeah, he's yeah. not really a pom. No, nah, he's not. Nah, nah, he, he hates us. him. He he's, actually hates him. Yeah, he's out. He, he hates us. him. I like, don't speak to him because, like, you know, you don't want to find out um, just how Australian his accent really is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, nah, welcome to the team. All right, second drop here. I'm thunderstruck. So you know who this bloke reminds me of. Who? Damien Martin. Oh, one Martin. of the great underrated cricketers. Mark Wall? Yeah. Elegant. Elegant. He's driving some balls through some pretty thin gaps in the field for four. Very, Very thin. thin. Very thin. And you know what? He will get, he'll burn us eventually because his racing pattern, he'll have to. Oh, of course he will. He'll be, he'll start $2 favourite somewhere. Oh, yeah. And he'll finish fourth. Yeah, but, oh, geez. Green light run, though. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Just a quick fire 20 off 25, looking elegant, and just does something stupid. Yep. You know. So, but what a talent. I reckon oh. he could be heading towards the – because I reckon he'll be suited at the 2000. I reckon he would be too, winding yeah. up if there's enough pace on the race, which there usually isn't at Queen Elizabeth. Oh, what a race. He's a, he's got interesting markings as well, I'm thunderstruck. A lot of, yeah. Baldy face. Yeah, he does. Yeah, a bit of flair. So, I'm just thinking back, did Mark War or – I don't think Damien Martin would have, but did they ever have like blonde hips through the hair oh. or something, you know? Something similar? Don't know. Maybe they were pretty prolific with the zinc on the face. Oh, I love that. Maybe. You, love know who, that. you know who was prolific with zinc on his face? Roy. Roy. <laughs> he didn't bat four though, Roy. He did it. <laughs> hey, one day cricket he might have. Yeah. T20 cricket he would have. Oh, 100%. Easily. But <laughs> what's, what sport are we covering here? Oh, I'd say both. <laughs> Uh, what about Animo? You know, coming in middle order. Oh, youngest, um, second youngest guy on the team, uh, but is already, you know, carved out a, a, a budding young career, a promising career. Yep, for Australia. Um, oh, look, he's got all the shots. Technically brilliant, uh, an absolute professional when he comes to the crease, builds and innings, accumulates runs. I'd say Animo. <laughs> Um, and, and you know what you're going to get with him. Uh, and I think he's, he's got 100 test matches written all over him, Animo. You know what this reminds me of is that New South Wales young batsman who's, you know, scored a couple of runs, you know, you know, you know decent runs in his first two years of Shield Griggin. And then they're, they're like, you know what? We're going to get let this bloke play against Sri Lanka in the middle order and just carve away some 50s, yep. get his confidence up, and then he'll have a 10-year career. Mate, 100%. Look, he nearly scored 100 in the biggest race of all the Cox players. <laughs> yeah. He just missed out. He did. Oh, you know. Yeah. And it was, you know, what is a bunker review as well. Yeah, it was. He was, but uh, there was there was a little edge when he nicked it before. Yeah, there was, unfortunately. Has to be Skipper coming in at six. Oh. Steve Walsh type. Yeah, without a doubt. She can do it all. Very elegant. Um, the all-rounder in the team because you don't win at 1,400 metres – or well, 1,600 metres, group one level. And then, you know, later on in the spring, just, you know, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll run in a Melbourne Cup and just absolutely blitz them. As an afterthought? Yep. You're bloody tired. 
but you know you dig in for your nation just puts in the peak uh time form rating of her career in the melbourne cup carrying 57 kegs as a mayor first mayor to play run in the top three since the great diva gee whiz oh she picks herself very elegant she's been performing at a um at a national level for oh years now averaging you know close to 50 with the bat has um, to Averaging sub-30 with the ball. Uh, bowls nice medium pace if called upon. Um, can also bowl some handy offies. Fields at, what, first, second slip? Point, maybe? Mm, no, nah, no, nah, not point. Not point. She'd be, in, she'd be in the grippers. Yeah. She'd be in the grippers or at mid-off barking instructions to the bowler. Yeah, she's got a lot on her plate. Because, mate, some of these bowlers, they need a word or two. Oh, some of these bowlers can get a bit wayward. Oh, bloody out they can. But... Very, VE is very similar to Steve Waugh. Mm. Can go through long patches of bad form. Yep. And, you know, a week's a long time in horse racing. Oh, Let me get it? that clear. Mm. But we have long memories. And she can go under as a $2 favourite every day of the week. 100%. Um, but what's that saying? Form is temporary. Class, Class. is permanent. Permanent. You heard that there. Well, our wicket keeper... Now, we just had to bl- put this bloke in the side. Mate, do you know what? Betting on an international in the Cox Plate, unless there's a horse called Winks in the race, <laughs> is a pretty safe bet. So you want a pretty safe pair of hands as a keeper, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> yeah. A state of rest is <laughs> a safe pair of hands a keeper because it's the international. Well, international, but I was going to say Owen Morgan-like, but he didn't keep at all. No. Because he's Irish, this fella. Yeah. So I don't know of many Irish wicket keepers out there. Nor do I. Um, That's beside the point. Yeah, but you know what? Sade of Rest had to be in the side for winning the, our greatest weight for age race. Of course. Um, going back to Ireland now, I believe, Sade of Rest. He's, he's already back at home. Um, thanks for coming and taking our prize money. You're welcome back next year. Yeah. Of course he is. Yeah. Well, Armory's... Touchdown here, I believe. So he's here and Spanish Mission is staying. Yep. And Spanish Mission is heading to... He's heading to a race. The group two, is it the Zipping? Yeah, the Zipping Classic. Mm. So that'll be insane. A yeah. horse of his quality racing... In Australia. In Yeah, love to see it. Mm. Um, all right. <laughs> Real SK Warn type. Oh, without a doubt. So... There was a bit of conjecture because picking the spinner is always tough. <laughs> but you nailed it. Oh, look. <laughs> and we picked this bloke because, as you know, spinners really start to come into their own later on in a test match. You know, day four in the afternoon, day five, the pitch is deteriorating. Mm. As a batsman, you're not really sure what to do. Yeah. Do I anticipate bounce and spin or and do, flight? Or do, do I, I go forward or do I stay back? Yep. But the one that gets is the one that just goes straight on. Yeah. So we picked a horse that doesn't really get going until the latter stages of a race, and that's Mars Crusader. Oh, my goodness. He leaves himself so much to do, but, geez, he can clean up late. He can. And when he's versing inferior inferior opposition, he wipes the floor with Sixfers, sevenfers. Easy. Easy. And when he's at the top level, he'll, he'll drag a couple. He'll leave a couple in his kit bag, but he might not get the JD. Every single time. There might be some expensive overs. There might be. Yep. And that's Mask Crusader. I think, yeah, he's a, he's a team spinner. And he's he proved in the uh, the yes, yes, yes. Uh, what was it? The Who won it last year? The Classic Legend Stakes. That if he's ridden forward, i.e. brought on on day one or day two, he gets tonked within an inch of his life. Yeah. Save him, save him for either a deck in the subcontinent or a deck that's starting to deteriorate. A real Day Jason four. Crazier type. Oh, Jason. <laughs> Couldn't he get some turn on the ball for an offie? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> he could get tonked though. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Like, we would get tonked out of... Where would we get tonked to? See, I don't think I could get tonked because I don't think there'd be enough pace on my ball <laughs> for them to generate enough speed on the bat for them to tonk me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we're just... We're making this commentary from our very comfy seats here. Yeah. But Jason did have a half-tracker in him. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Jason. 
First change has to be uh, probably the second best three-roll we have, I'd say. Mm. Uh, maybe third best. Best sprinting three-roll we have. Home affairs. Yeah. Oh. Well, well found by you. Oh, mate. An unbelievable performance. He, he, he demanded to get picked off the back of that performance because, you know, you couldn't ignore that. He's just taken a bucket load of wickets in one match. It, I think he got. I think he got all ten in an inning. <laughs> <laughs> and as a young fella, you know, bowling blistering pace, a little bit wayward. Yeah, well, of course he is. He's only a young man. Yeah, and he can come in and he can he can he can get a sneaky twenty or thirty very quickly. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. A few hundred and fifty kilometer thunderbolts. Crikey. He'll love the Gabba deck. Oh affairs. god, yeah, he loves it. Rock hard. Uh, and bouncy. Um, but yeah, well deserved. Yeah, welcome. Now this guy has just, he's worn us down. <laughs> as, as uh, just through sheer weight of wickets. He just, <laughs> just, we had to pick him. Had to, Eduardo. Yeah. Not He's still not one of mine, but we said on Derby Day, it's like if Eduardo wins this, he we, he's just a good horse. Yeah. And one that he did. Yep. And he's a good horse he is. He's a good horse, Eduardo. Consistent. He's, a, he's an older fella. He's only debuted at the age of 32. Yeah. That's his, that's his, this is his first baggy green. He's 32. I can <laughs> respect that. <laughs> uh, what's he bowling? Like what sort of what sort of pace? Like what? Like he's bowling quick, but what's his style? Is he a left, right, good uh, night? Uh, I, reckon, I reckon he's just your... Yeah. I reckon he bowls 140 plus because he's very quick. He is. He's quick. Is he, he just banging a line of length though? Bowls a heavy ball. Gotcha. Like a Peter Siddle type. Yeah. When, when pre, pre-vegan pre since yeah. he, when, he, when his chest used to bounce up to his yeah. chin when he was charging yeah. in. Yeah. Hat tricks on his birthday. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. That's Eduardo. Yeah. yeah. That's Eduardo. Yeah. Loved by many. Yep. Uh, but, you know, not loved by all. Yeah. Some think, you know. Um, like his silk suggests, he's just weirdly obsessed with bananas. <laughs> uh, no, we've nailed that. And, and then the, the, the leader of the attack. Has to be. Without a doubt. Has to be Nature Strip. Oh, 100%. He's, he's a stalwart. He's, you know, he's, he's been in the side for a long time. You know, there, there has been questions over his form before, but his form in the last 18 months to two years has just been absolutely Outstanding, Pat Cummins. Yeah, has to be. Has to be world class. If we didn't have Pat Cummins, my God, where would we be? Oh, I'll tell <coughs> you what, I'd be in the side. Twelfthy, <laughs> twelfthy. Um, so Artorius, he's he's only just going to get out there when the drinks break is like is ending, but he's going to get the drinks there quickly. But you want him in and around the squad because he deserves to be there. He needs the experience. He needs to learn a bit of professionalism. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> he's cheeky. He is. Cheeky. He's bloody cheeky. He is. Bloody cheeky Artorius. He might just be, you know, a summer away. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. But and the coach has. I think it was on reflection. It wasn't as clear cut because Peter Moody is bloody stiff. Yeah. So if you got Chris Wall and you got Peter Moody as the potential coaches, you've essentially got Darren Lehman and Justin Langer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've gone. We've gone with Justin Langer and, and Chris Waller. We feel like that's what the side needs for now. Yeah. But, you know, Peter Moody, he, he, he breeds a, a really promising culture as well. So either or, but I think Chris Waller just, you know, what's he got? The Everest, the Melbourne Cup, uh, the Coolmore. Yeah. Enough said. Heaps. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, team physios, J-Mac. Um, <laughs> yeah. So well done to him. Um, you know what I heard today? It's that Glenn Boss hasn't right, ridden a winner since August 7th. Yes, I read that today. Wow. That's a dry patch for Glenn. Possibly the largest of his career. Potentially. I don't know. Without absolutely with absolutely no insight or research done. G'day, Glenn. Anyway, let's call a young man who's in hotel quarantine just doing his best. Let's do that right now. Hopefully he picks up. Here we go. I just don't get that. It must be the phone. He's weird. Mm. Yellow. <laughs> Yellow. Mitchell, uh, it's your, your friend Declan and your other friend Daniel. 
Hello. Yeah. How are we, lad? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? Not as good as you, bruh. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say I'm good at the moment, boys. A little bit dusty. <laughs> bit slim, <laughs> a bit dusty. dusty. Yeah, but um, no, nah, I'm going well, lad. I'm going well. That's good, mate. That's good. Well, um, welcome back to Australia. Um, for those listening who don't know, uh, Miss Webson bowls a bit of leg spin. Um, good enough to get picked for the T Twenty squad, uh, the Australian T Twenty Twenty squad. They just obviously picked up the World Cup. The celebrations look fun, mate. <laughs> yeah, they were um, they were real good lads. Actually, they were a bit um, a bit rowdy, but it, uh, unfortunately, the, the only bad part about it was. Um, we had a we had a nine thirty a.m. flight the next day, so um, that kind of that kind of sucked a little bit. Meant we meant we basically had eight hours to celebrate the World Cup win, so uh, we definitely definitely made the most of those eight hours. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> cheer yeah, but, yeah, yeah, cheer um, But you, you boys probably seen there's there's a few videos floating around on socials um, of of the the carry on in the shed, so. Um, it was it was basically that, but but all night we sort of we sort of carried on in in the sheds for a bit there, and then made our way back to the team hotel. Um, we're obviously in a in a bubble, so we can't head out or anything. So um, yeah, basically went hard at the team hotel till till the sun came up. So yeah, it was it was a it was a good night. Lovely. So sweep, you said there was eight hours to do some of your finest work, but was there anyone that didn't quite make the full eight hours? Went a bit too hard. <laughs> yeah, there was de- definitely not everyone saw the sun come up. Um, oh, I won't throw anyone under the bus and name names, but um, uh, there was uh, the uh, as far as I can remember, the, the guys that made it through were uh, myself, um, basically all the all the benchies. So myself, <laughs> Agar, Richardson, um, Inglis, and then I think Zamson Stoin was still awake. Um, and maybe Big Bison was there as well, Big Mitch Marsh. So, well, James, um, I heard he can, heard he can guzzle yeah. a few. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the big man gets through him. So, um, but I think he had to duck off quickly because he needed a burger. So he went and ordered a ordered a burger at some point. So he went missing for a bit. But yeah, <laughs> well, you know, Big Bison, big, bo- big boys got to eat. Yeah, they get hungry, mate. They get hungry. Yeah, and I did, eat, I did appreciate uh, Adam Zampa's Instagram work. Just throwing barbs back at uh, yeah. old Michael Vaughan. Yeah, big daggers thrown. I love that. Yeah, it's actually, um, yeah, it was good. It was good to see that banter because, especially with what's coming up, Ash is coming up, throwing some palms under the bus. You, you love to see it. Oh, absolutely love to see it. And don't they love a big choke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the palms, mate. Love it. <laughs> Speaking of the Ashes, mate, congratulations on getting picked in the Ashes Test squad. That is a another huge effort by you. Thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah, stoked with that. Eh? It was actually so weird. I, I um, I found out like on the media post. So I actually didn't get a call. Like I knew I was in like the the extended squad for like the Aussie A and Ashes thing, but I didn't actually know I was in the Ashes squad. So right. that was that was <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise to wake up. Um, from like waking up from World Cup celebrations, real dusty. Check my phone. I got all these messages. People being like, "Congrats for making the Ashes." I was like, "What?" <laughs> so that was pretty weird. Um, but yeah, obviously, obviously over the moon with that. Eh? Ashes, how good! Um, mm. First time being picked in an Ashes squad. So yeah, can't wait. Yeah, that'll be awesome, mate. That'll be awesome. So, what's like the situation now? So you're um, you're in quarantine. You're you're down the Goldie, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we're at um, yeah down on the Gold Coast. Um, yeah, just in quarantine, so going to be here for the next. Uh, I think I've got twelve days left, and then um, jump out of here, and it's pretty much straight into prep for the, for the first test. Um, so um, the good thing about it being in Brisbane is I get to stay home, so um, I'll be able to catch up with with you lads um, and, and have a beer or so, and. Um, so that's good. I haven't been home for ages, so yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be nice. Excellent, mate. And mate, can you tell me what was the uh, weapon of choice um, over in the UAE? Like, what what were you able to drink to celebrate? I'm guessing there wasn't any goldies. <laughs> no, no, no mangoes, uh, which was which wasn't great. But um, they they provided us with a beer. I, I I couldn't tell you the name of it. It was an Indian beer. Um, in the shed, but 
that none, not much of that went down went down the hatch. It was pretty much all thrown. Uh, <laughs> so um, that that's probably probably the best thing for it anyway. Um, and then uh, they sorted some some Coronas out for us. Um, a few of the boys drinking whiskey, uh, red wine. Um, I think the only thing that was left at the end of the night was um, there was some like bottles of Chardonnay at the bottom of the fridge. <laughs> so uh, we had to we had to drink. Sh- well, when I say we, it was like basically me and um, me and Zan were basically drinking Chardonnay out of the bottle by the end of the night. Um, that was all that was left. So uh, why you go? I don't even drink Chardonnay. <laughs> but, that must be about the only thing you don't drink because at a <laughs> at a mate's wedding recently. Mate, I've never seen a man be able to drink a cocktail of different alcohol so and just be completely fine. Uh, I, could, I couldn't settle, boys. I, could, I was enjoying the chambers. <laughs> just couldn't get into the rhythm. And then I was like, yeah, and then and then I obviously love an Adam Ashley, so I jumped on the for a bit there as well. And then, yeah, and then there was red as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, I couldn't, couldn't pick that night, lads, so. Woke up fine, so that was good. Oh, <laughs> mate. How good is dodging a hangover bullet? Oh, ideal. Didn't dodge one this time, though. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Did not dodge. Swep, um, final cricket question. Um, is there, and, you know, you've been lucky enough to be selected in a few different squads over the journey. Uh, so you've been to yeah. India and Bangladesh from memory, and then you were a part of the the test squad last season, uh, last uh, summer as well. But yeah. is there a difference between being 12th in a, say, a T20 situation and a test situation? Is there a bit – are you a bit more relaxed in a T20 situation? Uh, I wouldn't say you're more relaxed in a T20. Um, I think it's like – because it's so high pressure, um, like you, you've got to be – like captains have to be on their overs otherwise they get fined and stuff so it's, it's a bit like you have to be on the ball when you're getting out and on on the field and stuff um but it's definitely not as hard as 12 things for test matches just because you basically mentally wise you have to be focusing on the game for five days straight six hours a day um and you got to watch every ball and make sure that the boys are all set and all ready to go so the fact that t20 game only goes for three hours it's like Three hours on the job, and then you then you're right to go. You can chill and get on the beers with the boys, and um, so that it's probably better twelve things in T20 just from that sense. So, so twelve men in a test match is hard work, man. Especially like you don't want to stuff up like getting water on Smudge's gloves or <laughs> or, ta- or fill, filling filling Davy Warner's bottle with the wrong wrong drink. So yeah, done that before. That was not that not great. Well, fingers <laughs> crossed. It's. Uh... You know, we don't want to wish ill on anyone's career, mate, but fingers crossed you break through into the test side and the Aussie side soon. Yeah, thanks, boys. It'll be, be a good one, to, good one to start with in an Ashes, wouldn't it? But, oh, yeah, mate. There we go. Ashes debut, Gabba, hat trick. <laughs> We're there. Yeah. With That's happened from before, you, hasn't it? Yeah. That's happened before, a hat-trick at the Gabba, and that yeah. rings a bell. Oh, yeah, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it potentially, yeah. Anyway, um, but mate, look, we're, believe it or not, we're actually a horse racing podcast. I don't know if you've uh, listened to us. We're, oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> we're actually the um, the fastest growing horse racing podcast on the south side of Brisbane. Um, so oh. cricket might be your claim to fame, but that's ours. <laughs> so, so, mate, we, uh, we'll talk through some... Haas racing with you. So we've got one group one uh, over in Ascot in Perth. Um, look, I know you, you keep a really close eye on the on the um, Western Australian <laughs> form. Um, got the railway stakes. Have you had a chance to have a bit of a look-see? There's, there's one hot in the market there. Yeah, I, I have had a, a quick look-see. Um, and I'll apologise to all the listeners because um, yeah, you boys know I'm, I'm not the... Uh, I'm not the connoisseur when it comes to horse tipping, but uh, so, so take all of these tips with, um, yeah, take them lightly, boys. Um, but, uh, yeah, it looks like Western Empire is the, the one to beat, isn't it? Um, dollar seventy favourite. Um, you boys know me, though, and uh, I'm definitely not, <laughs> not jumping on it. Definitely not jumping on a dollar seventy favourite. Um, so, Love it. 
Um, I, I had a look at the other couple um, of decent ones in there. Um, I can't can't get behind a horse called Kiss on All Four Cheeks, so <laughs> I've um, I've uh, I've gone with the notorious one. Um, it's the one I'm gonna I'm gonna back in that one. Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, oh yeah, so it ran second to Western Empire last start. So, you yeah. know, the tables could turn. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, boys. It all, looks like it always runs amongst, r- runs amongst the placings and uh, it's nice and consistent as well. So, hopefully it gets up for a little upset. Nice little 15 bucks to find out, mate. I have to have a little spec on that. 100%. <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> um, well, moving on to the juicy steaks. Um, what's your... Best Ruffy of the day, mate. Uh, Ruffy, uh, what did I go here? I've gone, um, I've gone real rough. I've gone proper juice here, lads. Um, <laughs> Fifty bucks, actually. Oh, we did, we, um, it's, a, it's a Leroy bet. Yeah, Leroy! I've gone. <laughs> 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 oh, that's never not funny. Oh, that's so good. Are you in Ascot, um, mate? No, I'm not. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah that's 100% mate, that's fine. fine. I've gone the sunny coast. Love it. Race seven, number five, Needorp. Needorp. The, yeah, uh, the black soil. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, again, proper roughy, but um, I think I read somewhere it's, it's had a bit of a spell and, and it runs well fresh. So, yeah, 50, 50 bucks I'm, I'm, I'm willing to. We want to find out, lads. Oh, geez. If it gets up, you'll be absolutely killing us in the juicy steaks, legend, oh. mate. We're, we're suffering. <laughs> we're suffering. We're hurting. What about it? Oh, no. What about it each way, sweat? Uh, each way, uh, what do I add here? I've gone Kembla Grange, race one, number two, tampering. Um, looks like a bit of an open race, this one, so... Um, sort of, sort of looked like anyone could get up in this one. So I've, uh, yeah, I've gone with Tampering. He's coming off a win. Um, I think I saw somewhere two thousand meters will be tough for it. But yeah, I think it's paying ten bucks, um, three dollars to play. So I'm, I'm going to chuck a little each way on it. Yeah, oh, I thought this horse might have been trained by Junior's missus, but I'm sadly mistaken. No, you're thinking of a different horse. Yeah. Anyway, what about your best of the day here, Sweat? Yeah. Oh, you there, bro? Oh no! Oh no! Only reason for it is the the horse is owned by. <laughs> Sorry, Swep, we lost you for uh, about two seconds. You have to you have to start again. Who was your Who was your best of the day? Oh, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, lads. My my best of the day, I said, was a bit of a biased one because I'm uh, I'm actually um, going for a horse that is owned by someone who's in here quarantining with me, Mitch Marsh. So love that. Um, ask. Ascot race seven number two. It's a ray day. Um, he's uh, he's been plugging it for the last three weeks. Um, he, he had the he had the trials up on the on the team bus on the way to trainings and was showing everyone how well it's running at the moment. And um, I sent him a message before and said, "Is your is your horse running this weekend?" And he said, "Yeah, mate, get all over it." I said, "I'll I'll give you a plug on on the potty then. Um, invoice me later." So um, yeah. It's, it's a ray day, number two in, in Ascot and race seven. Yeah, brilliant. That's that's brilliant. Well, you know, we can't just hear that, you know, from your mouth sweat. We'll have to get the big bison on and chat all things it's Bentley, a ray day. I'll, well, I'll, um, I'll, flick him, I'll flick him through and um, flick him through the link to, to the potty and, uh, yeah, get him, get him to listen and then... Um, Sure enough, I'm sure I'm sure you'll want to jump on. Well, the thing is, what what's he going to be doing next Thursday at about six thirty p.m.? He's not going to be doing much. He's going to be in Quasar, oh. and we're talking about Perth racing. He's, He's a great Quasar. West Australian himself. Has to, have to, have to. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll I'll pull some strength, boys. I'll see what I can do. What Brilliant. a man! What a man! Well, Swep, thank you for uh, taking the time. I know you're very busy, um, <laughs> but mate, congrats, congrats. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, hopefully, yeah, you'll jag your first test cap uh, over the summer in the Ashes against the great old foe. But very proud of you, bruh. And, um, yeah, Thanks, you're doing great mate. things, mate. Thanks, Sweat, mate. Beers, boys. Thanks for having me on. It's been, been a lot of fun. Beers soon, eh? Oh, 100%. 
Oh, I reckon a few Zoom beers if you, if you came for that. Oh, Zoom beers taste just as good <laughs> as in real life beers. Well, as you know, Swep, the f- like all of our partners are away this weekend, so we can definitely have some Zoom beers. We might that even sounds, deal, deal like you a in in a uh, few hands of poker or something. <laughs> <laughs> Gamble responsible. If you can somehow work out how to do that, I'll definitely jump in on that, but I'm not sure how it's going to work. But I'll definitely jump in for the beers, though, lads. Lovely. All righty. Thanks, mate. We'll uh, chat soon. <laughs> right on, boys. Thanks, right. Web. See you, mate. Yeah, uh, what a funny man. What a guy. <clears throat> Huge about the big bison. Loves his horses. Let's see if he's actually in the ownership here. Because, oh, you, you know, it, it's not just here. any horse, mate. This, is, this horse is racing in the WA Guineas. Man, it's $3.80 favourite. You know. I can um, see an MR Marsh in the ownership. I can see an SE Marsh as well. Oh, oh. Sauce. Couple, couple of swampies. <laughs> couple of swamps in the ownership. Love to see that. Um, all right. Let's whip through these juicy steaks, mate. Uh, but before you do, we have to do it responsibly. Uh, if gambling is an issue for you, uh, hit the Gambling Help Hotline on 1800 858 858. Uh, there's also some resources online. But Juicy Sakes time. We've been struggling, but honestly, some true roughies. There is a group one in Perth oh, yeah. as well. <laughs> we're just like, Damn we're it. just completely skirting over it. Damn but, it. mate, let's be honest. How much thought did you really give this race when there's a dollar sixty five favorite? In it? Um, not much, not much. But like its last win, Western Empire was very impressive. Mm. Like ease down, still one by two or three. <clears throat> but if I was to make a case, I feel like the least dear stakes has traditionally been a very strong form line yes, reference. Yeah. Um, in past, just looking at the history of the race, which I posted up uh, during the week. And Massimo was a pretty impressive winner of that, but I'm actually out of that race. I'm happy to take the mare out of that dance music. Um, Sticky Barrier, um, but I think she's probably of those top three that ran through. So Valor Road, Massimo, and dance music. I feel like she's the best suited of them all. Yep. Um, and she's so bloody consistent. Yeah, and she's getting a price for her as well. Yeah, but Western Empire's my on toppy. Yeah, same here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I have good co- good coverage. What <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Western Empire wins. Yeah. Draws really well. Um, Fifty three kegs on its back, so <clears> it's the going in with the minimum weight. Pikey on board, got the right silks. It'll win. Things you love to see. Yep. Uh, okay, juicy steaks time. Roughie yep. of the day. My roughie is in Ballarat, uh, race ten. Uh, number 11, Fake Love. When I was looking at it, gee whiz, it was at 15s. Now it's coming to 11s with Ladbrokes. Um, it's got form around Extreme Warrior, Fake Love. It uh, wasn't great first start, but it had a throat issue, so excuse that. Uh, ran third behind Marine 1. Um, last start where it ran third, it had 56 and a half kegs on its back that day. Marine 1 had 55. Fake Love's got 54 here, and Marine 1 has... Uh, 56. So they've basically swapped weights. Um, draws well, Barry one. She'll roll forward. Linda Meach on board. She knows how to uh, ride a front runner. 11 bucks to find out with Ladbrokes. Lovely. Um, as I said before, haven't done a hell of a lot of form this weekend. So, but what I have done, I've found a roughie that I like in the railway. So what I'm doing is I'm having a Quinella. Oh, brilliant. So I'm having Ascot Race 8. I'm having a Quinella. Number four, Dance Music. Into the favourite Western Empire. Now, if my maths is correct, dance music's paying about forty bucks. So, in a Quinella, that could pay about the same ish, mm. give or take. So, yeah, that could be. I could be well and truly back in the game if that thing wins. Juicy. Yeah. So, what about each way here, Brad? I'm um, still in Ballarat. I'm in race eight. Uh, I'm on number thirteen. Only words. Chris Waller, Brady Preb. One last start uh, goes stays at two thousand meters here, but I really like what I saw last start. Um, gets a bit skinnier as well. Um, mares in form, seven dollars fifty with laddies to find out. Love yes. that. I reckon for my best each way. I've been waiting for this horse for about six months, and I've finally found its race. Yeah, have have never bet on it. Okay, I'm gonna have a 
good whack at on uh, responsibly this weekend. <laughs> I want you to go to Kemble Grange, race nine. I want you to go to number five, Wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. So this horse drops in grade hugely. Mm. Um, was Has form around... Who to have form around? Moanga last uh, last prep uh, was only a couple of lengths off it in one of the guineas over the autumn. Got gelded, got its nuts chopped clean off. Bang, clean off. Uh, it's third up here, and you know there's a little bit of rain around in New South Wales. Bit doesn't mind that, doesn't mind that at all. And he he's in a benchmark eighty eight here. He yeah. will absolutely eat this up. Seven bucks is an absolute gift mm. for this mm. horse. Huey Bowman, Chris Waller. Lovely. Nah, fair. Do you know what I found interesting about this race? Zushak stepping up to um, 1,600 metres for the first time. Um, gets the 3K claim, but nah, that's not a betting race for me. But if you like Wheelhouse at that price, give it a whack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Who's your best of the day? Um, still in Ballarat. <laughs> Gee whiz. That's where I'm playing this weekend. Uh, race five, number four. It's our time. Um, back to last start. Flemington. Um, it was elite over the last uh, 200 metres. I think it had the second or third fastest last 200 metres of the day and second or third fastest last 600 metres of the day. Um, it's our time. Um, it's carrying 60 kegs there. Uh, drops back to 54 kilos here. I think um, Mr. O'Brien's got a pretty good horse on his hands with this. It's our time. Had an injury um, in the Aussie Guineas. Uh, so that's why I had a massive let up. Um, but I think he's come back a pretty smart horse. So, um, And I think he's he's trying to make him a, a sort of handy 1,200 metre horse. It's our time. Um, yeah, $3.20 to find out. I tend to agree. Okay. Um you know what? I'm going to play in three states. I'm, okay. going to, I'm going to Ballarat. So take these tips with an absolute grain of salt. Um, I'm going to the Ballarat Cup. Yep. You know what? I'm backing in my boy. Thought of that. He's back. He's back in a big way. Um, now, if the rain does come in Melbourne, I think that severely hampers his chances. He needs a rock hard. Yeah. Uh, so, you know what? Melbourne... Weather forecast. I think it's pretty cloudy without pissing down. Okay. So, you know what? I'm going to back in the curators here that they've got the pitch just right. Uh, Quantum Mechanics obviously got a great chance and a great roughing in the race at 19. Zaydani has finally broken through. But, yeah, why not thought of that? Why won't he keep winning? He's been dominating. Fair enough, mate. So, um, but, yeah. Yeah, fair. Other one I really like, just <laughs> give it a quick club. Plug Ballarat race seven, number five, Alcyone. Back to last start, it was awesome. Should go well again. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, good podcast. Yep. I'm lost for words how it was 47 minutes long, but, you know, you get that on the big jobs. So that's my Thursday night done. Um, but um, anything else to add? Oh, just um, – I'm sure the listeners are absolutely besotted by our passion for Western Australian racing when it is exclusively for Western Australians. I have to say, Peter Moody, I tend to agree with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but that being said, if we can get one of the greatest Western Australians of all time, yep. a World Cup winning Western Australian, I might add, yep. on this podcast, that would be huge. So good luck, Sweat. Thanks, Sweat. Thanks, mate. Uh, good luck. And, Mitch, we look forward to chatting to you next week. Yeah, and hope your thing goes well on Saturday. Yeah. All righty. Haru, thanks, Drifters. Bye.